Go! We're finally awake. Want to hear some Elder Scrolls theories? I'm a nerd. No, 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 no. Come back, come back. I'm a nerd for the Elder Scrolls series. And if you've ever gotten deep into that lore, then you, uh, you know, it gets weird. In the vein of that weirdness, here are four of my crazy Elder Scrolls theories. Enjoy, and feel free to question and challenge me in the comments. In the Morethic era, the Aldmer inhabited a continent known to them as Altmeris, but to the men, it was known as Yokuda. They lived in a tenuous peace for a while until humans came to the continent. With their divine scars and hatred, the elves fought against the Yokudans until they were almost wiped out. The Yokudans referred to them as the left-handed elves, referring to their perceived sinister nature. You get it? Sinister? It's, it's left-handed. Anyway, in the course of this bloody war, the Orichalc Tower was activated, and Yokuda slash Altmeris was sunk beneath the sea. The remaining few Altmer fled on ships and landed upon the Isles of Somerset, while Altmeris slash Yokuda was but a distant memory. Later, many expeditions set off to find the lost homeland, one of which went northeast of Somerset, towards Yokuda. Let's lay out our evidence and point out any flaws in the theory. The only flaw I see is dates not matching up. Yokuda sunk in First Era 792, while Aldmeris sunk in the late Morethic Era. But those two dates aren't too far apart, and the, and the similarities are still there. If you look at the geography of, say, Skyrim, you can see that much of the terrain needs Nern to be much older than is told in the Anuak, leading to the idea that Nern is millions upon billions of years old, Either the gods took a much longer time than is recorded, or the gods had no part in this. See this video by Leftover Pat for more information. With the subraces of elves and men, it certainly makes sense that evolution may have occurred. In terms of halpas, uh, all we know about them is that they're cycles of birth, death, and rebirth of a world. The same concept in many Eastern religious traditions. There's no reason that halpas couldn't be the cycles of mass extinctions as we have here on Earth. We even call those periods eras such as the Mesozoic Era, which began with the Parmian Extinction and with the KT Extinction. Our evidence for this is only sparse because of the fragmentary nature of information on Kalpas and the heavy mytho-historical vibe of most information on the creation of Nern. Yeah, this one's going to take some explaining. The gods are either super-powerful mages or those beings that have achieved Tim. Even in the completely canonical world of the Elder Scrolls, we can cite super powerful mages that have the attributes of gods. But first, we should define what these attributes are. In most traditions, a god is a being who is very powerful, very long-lived, and or immortal, and very knowledgeable. For the first one, most mages have the potential to become incredibly powerful, as evidenced by the Talvani and the Augur of Dunlane. Speaking of the Talvani, what's that second one again? Hmm, that's right. The most powerful Talvani mages are very long-lived, even immortal. And we can't count out liches or vampires here, either. As a rule, most mages have to be very intelligent, as attested by the Arkham University and College of Winterhold. Magic takes a great deal of concentration and knowledge not to send yourself straight back to Aetherius. So, are there any examples of mortal mages becoming gods? I say we look the Tribunal. While not all of them were made as necessarily, only so the Sil is considered as such, they all have magical prowess in some way, shape, or form. But speaking of them, what about the other way? Those who know it can reshape the land, witness the home of the Red King once jungled. Now we don't know much of Kim, only that it's a word in Elm effects that means royalty or high splendor. But when sources such as the Mythic Dawn commentaries or Waking Dreams talk of it, it seems to note a realization of the true nature of the universe. That it is all a dream in the mind of the one true god. Mortals who have achieved this then go through Amaranth and are faced with an existential crisis, which can either resolve in them realizing that they don't exist, in which case, well, we really don't know what happens, or in them reaffirming their existence and becoming a sort of lucid dreamer, with nearly infinite power to shape the dream as they wish, becoming what mortals would call God. So, do we have evidence of this? 
Indeed we do. The tribunal gained their powers from attuning to the heart of Law Khan, which is said to have thrust them into a state of Kim where they obtained their power. It is also believed that figures like Palos and Finaster achieved Kim and thus became gods. But if we extend this beyond the known examples, why couldn't the gods we know in the current year 201 of the Fourth Era be much the same? Why couldn't the Nine Divines be but mortals that have gone beyond seek the truth? Our evidence here is scarce, but most descriptions of Kim and popular thinking in the lore community seems to fit. The mage aspect is a bit of a stretch, but we've seen incredibly powerful magic users many times, so it works in theory. We won't go into who the Dwemer are, as if you're watching a Elder Scrolls theories video, you really should know. But the real question is if the name Dwarf is accurate. In most fantasy, including D&D, from which Tess takes heavy inspiration, dwarves are diminutive, industrious, and ingenious craftsmen who live deep in underground fortresses and cities. They often have beards and prize martial prowess along with craftsmanship. In the Elder Scrolls, the Dwemer are similar in many ways, except for a few key differences. They are anti-theistic, they don't prize martial prowess, and they're not diminutive. Wait, the last point. What if they are? The name Dwarf is often attributed to the Giants, yet Giants aren't normally able to communicate with other mortals, so how did the term Dwarf enter the lexicon? Well, maybe they really were Dwarves, as in smaller than other races. Now, I hear you saying, but what about Morwen? I hear you constantly. Your comments haunt my dreams like a moth priest deciphering an Elder Scroll. In the Elder Scrolls III, Morrowind, we see the ghosts of Dwemer that seem to be the size of an Aragreen or just a normal mortal. Here's while I feel justified in discounting that. The Bosmer, or Wood Elves, are supposed to be much shorter, but the only time we've seen this prominently is in Tess IV Oblivion. In all other mainline Elder Scrolls games, Bosmer are around the same size as any other race. It's completely possible that if we saw Dwemer ghosts or Dwemer themselves in Oblivion, they would have been really short. Speaking of Morrowind, we do see Yagwan Bagarn, and he is much shorter. While this may be due to the prosthetics he has, it doesn't seem to phase him one bit. So maybe this is what he was like in his previous life. Plus, if you're building artificial limbs, wouldn't you want to retain the height of the person wearing the prosthetics? The main criticism here is architecture and the fact that we see Dwemer Ghost, but I'm unconvinced by these points as I stated above. So there are some of my crazy Elder Scrolls theories. Challenge me in the comments, and let me know if you like this style, or if you have any outlandish theories of your own. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider liking and subscribing. Have a wonderful day, and walk in the light, or we will drag you into it.